Hi guys, it's Ed Bud here and welcome back to part two of my future running shoes of 2020 series. Before we get started, just want to say I hope you're all keeping safe out there, you're all keeping healthy. I hope some of the content I've been producing recently is raising the spirits and giving us something that we can look forward to in the future on the horizon. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications of when new videos have been launched. It also helps the channel massively if you give this video a thumbs up, like and share it with your running buddies. Okay, let's get to it. So leading on from my part one video, I've got another batch of very exciting running shoes I'm gonna take a brief look at. Just trying to sort of give us some stuff to focus on, uh, give us something to look forward to. You know, there will be a time when this kind of weird situation is done and dusted, and I think then we'll truly appreciate all the stuff that we can do, all the activities that are available to us. That will happen. We've got through difficult times before, and we will make it through if we follow the rules and stay sensible. So do make sure you're trying to keep active, but staying in line with your local rules and regulations. Okay, here we go. First up, I want to discuss the kind of most elusive of racing shoes on the horizon, which is the ASICS Meta Racer. I'm not sure why ASICS have been so secretive about this shoe. There was one Instagram post that they put out um, with a kind of side-on picture of the shoe, someone kind of running like an action pose. And it certainly looks from some of the information I found on the web that the shoe was set to launch in June 2020. There's lots of design kind of nods to current ASICS shoes, the Meta Ride, the Evo ride as well, also the Glide ride. It certainly seems to put a lot of those different kind of design nods into one shoe, kind of mold them together. It was a little bit like uh, in the 90s, you got these kind of indie bands that would kind of pull together loads of 60s kind of beat music and kind of make these cookie cutter kind of tunes. It certainly looks like there's a thinner tongue, a tongue, blah, blah, blah. It certainly looks like there's a thinner tongue on the Meta Racer than offerings previously from ASICs like the Evo Ride is quite considerable on this one. And the tongue on the Glide Ride was even thicker. It looks like there's still a rocker shaped midsole and outsole combination in the Meta Racer. And you've probably seen that picture of the weird hole at the front of the shoe. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. Not intentionally anyway. I mean, people have worn running shoes into the ground and made their own holes at the front, but not straight out of the box. I'm really intrigued by this hole. You know, is it for ventilation? It's certainly gonna limit the use of the shoe. You're not gonna be able to use it on sort of trails and sort of stony, gravelly areas. Can you imagine that? Running along and your shoes kind of picking up some stones and gravel, maybe some small insects. Actually, that could be quite dangerous in certain places in the world. Some people have said it's to do with sort of venting moisture and water and stuff out of the shoe. Guess that could work. So there's lots and lots of secrets about this shoe that we're yet to sort of fully have all the information on. I think we need to hang fire a little bit before we pull this shoe apart too much. We need to figure out really what's going on with it. It does appear as though the midsole uses some sort of flight foam variant. Uh, it does mention it on the side of the shoe, similar here to the Evo Ride. But aside from that, we're gonna have to wait for stats on it. There's very, very little information to go on. I've included this shoe for sort of non-biased purposes. So we've got absolute inclusion across all the different manufacturers. And you know, ASICs have been producing some good stuff recently. So I'm not gonna discount that shoe completely. You know, they could pull it out of the bag, right? On to the next shoe which is the Adidas Adi Zero Pro. Now I'm particularly excited about this one. I know some of the viewers out there are really excited about it too. Even more exciting is that I've noticed that the shoe is now up on the Adidas UK website. There are two colorways in fact. There's that kind of black, orange, white kind of colorway and also a blue colorway as well, which seems to have a sort of yellowy, limey blast on the bottom. As you know, I've mentioned that shoe quite a number of times over the last few weeks. I think the shoe was set for an April launch, but now it has, as I say, appeared on the Adidas UK website. And it says it will be released on the 31st of March. So I'll be in for that one. I'll certainly be purchasing that shoe to give you my initial and then full reviews over time. It could be, you know, a full review by that stage of, you know, running around a pool table, but uh, I'll still review it. Some things must continue. So confirmed on the website, it does have a boost and light strike midsole. It does appear to be mainly boost actually. The kind of outer edges of the midsole are light strike. It sort of seems to encompass the boost. It has that carbine, what's it called? So it does have that carbon plate. Obviously anybody that's worn a boost midsole shoe before 
or know that it's highly cushioned, but sometimes it can feel a little bit kind of wallowy. It can lack a little bit of stability. Certainly at speed, I've found that. And sometimes boost can be a little bit too flexible. Very nice, simple upper. It certainly reminds me of the Takumi Sen upper. I really do love Adidas's uppers on their lightweight racing shoes at the moment. There's hardly anything to this one. So I'm anticipating a very light and breathable upper on the Adi Zero Pro. Cost is going to be about £159. You know that there'll be continental rubber on the bottom of the Adi Zero Pro. I'm a real big fan of that. I've worn boost shoes for the last sort of, three years or so and always been impressed with their durability and traction in terms of even wet conditions. Across all conditions really. I do remember wearing the Adios 4 on some kind of traily hill exercises from towards the latter end of last year and they did really well. Apparently the plate within the Adi Zero Pro is called Carbitex. So I really don't see Han Solo going in for this one anytime soon. As with the Takumi Sen, Yoshitori Amori has been behind the kind of design ideas on this one. I've really enjoyed the light strike implementation within the Takumi Sen 6 here. Though I'm not sure it's got enough cushion for me for perhaps certainly anything above a half marathon I'd probably look at this being like a 10k shoe really. I think the addition of more boost could perhaps make that more accessible to more runners over greater distances within the Adi Zero Pro. It could give perhaps a more forgiving underfoot feel for a lot more people. I think the blue colorway of the Adi Zero Pro is going to be about a week after the kind of uh, orange, black and white version. So at around about £159, it makes for certainly a challenger to Nike's Vaporfly and Alphafly series. And it puts it in a little bit under some of the other manufacturers as well, such as Brooks and New Balance. So not perhaps quite as eye-watering a price as some of the others. Last but not least is the New Balance Fuel Cell RC. Here again, we've got a carbon plate shoe from New Balance, approximate drop of 10 millimeters. Again, information on this shoe is very, very scarce. I've been scouring all sorts of websites, translating information, trying to find out some nuggets of knowledge about these shoes for you. Very few images actually exist of this shoe. Engineered mesh upper, one of the websites mentioned that a US size 9 was just under 200 grams in weight. So it's certainly right down there in terms of weight um, as a competitor to some of the other carbon fiber plate shoes. Some European sites list the retail price at being around 230 euros, which converts to about 212 UK pounds. In my mind, I'm kind of imagining the midsole fuel cell material from the Rebel with some kind of more additional rigidity from that carbon fiber plate. I mean, this shoe is quite a flexible shoe, really. You've got this kind of TPU piece here, but it doesn't really provide any rigidity. I think I'm imagining a more fitting mesh type upper material than the kind of flyknit type stuff that you had on the Rebel. I know it's not flyknit as such, but it's that type of material. That's what it reminds me of. I think putting all those things together it could be a real winner. I think till release though, I'm just going to have to kind of dream about that one and imagine what it could be like. Imagine the Everly Brothers performing their hit in Dream, or perhaps Roy Orbison singing in Dreams, you know, right about this moment. Dream of shoes, dreaming of beautiful summer days, hanging out with friends and family. They will come back. We will make it through. I found the fuel cell material on the Rebel really great. It's got a lot of energy return there. It's a very fast shoe, very light shoe. Let's hope that that RC, when it does come out, produces a similar thing, just with a little bit more rigidity and snap of that carbon fiber plate. Quick musical interlude for you. I've been going back through all my CDs. I've got hundreds, hundreds of them in a bid to find some new music to listen to while I've been out there grinding down the outsoles on some of the shoes that I've been using recently. One of the CDs I picked up out of my collection was the White Stripes Die Still. It's got some great tracks on. This is a brilliant album. In fact, I remember the very day that I bought this back in 2001. That was like 19 years ago. You're pretty good looking. Hello Operator and Death Letter, some great tracks on here. It's a really low down, sort of lo-fi production on this album. No frills, just kind of great tunes, great music. Some wonderful guitar tones that Jack White gets. There are two albums out before they became sort of very big and they kind of broke in terms of success over here in the UK. So it does remind me of some great times when I got my first kind of proper jobs, I guess, really and I was buying lots of music, lots of CDs, and listening to loads of music as well. And hopefully I'm getting back to that now, maybe. So do check this one out, The White Stripes, D Still. That's about all for me for today, guys. Thanks for watching through to the end of the video. 
please remember to hit the subscribe button down here in the corner and click the bell for notifications as to when new videos are launched. Please help the channel out by giving the video a thumbs up like and sharing it with your running buddies. Stay safe out there. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.